Hi everybody and welcome to my War Games Hobby Channel, Alec here. Now you'll see I've got two units of skirmishers on the table and these are from the Lion Rampant rules and what I'd like to do is to talk through um, the advantages and the disadvantages of having the different troop types in this rule book. And the first two that I'm going to talk about are skirmishers and a light cavalry. Now, I'm sure if anyone's been watching my videos, you realise how much I like a Lion Rampant as a set of rules. The second edition has improved them even more. And uh, I played them a lot, to be honest, especially of an evening down a club when we are limited to time. And um, we get really good games out of these rules. So we play them quite a bit. Now, for those that don't, know the rules that well or for those that are thinking of starting i just thought i'd give a few tips on the different troop types and the first two i'm going to do it on as i've mentioned is the skirmishers and light horse so let's talk about skirmishers first so here we have a unit of six javelin men that are sitting conveniently in a wood now, the first thing you have to remember is that skirmishers are exactly as they are. They're there to harass the enemy, to shoot at them from a range and try and do damage, but stay safe themselves. Let's look at the details of a unit of skirmishers on page 97 of the rule book. Uh, as it mentions there, skirmishers represent woodsmen, scouts, brigands, excitable youths, professional skirmishers. They, they flirt around the battlefield in small units. They're missile armed and they are of limited value than a stand up fight, but they are capable of grabbing unopposed objectives and harrying the enemy with their accurate shooting. They do move fast uh, in, in poor terrain, so they're not slowed up at all, but they must avoid close combat. They do try and evade enemy charges and are hard to target with missile weapons as they make full use of the terrain around them. Uh, skirmishers may be represented by models armed with bows, crossbows, slings, or the javelins that you see here. But they all fight in the same way, no matter what weapons uh, they're depicted with. Their missile range is shorter than bows, um, normal bows and crossbows, and armed as they are armed with hunting weapons rather than the more powerful war bows and use close ranged aimed shots. However, their range is greater than javelins thrown from horseback. We'll cover that later. So whatever they're armed with, they've got the same range as 12 inch range. So let's look at the, uh, the stats now. So there are six models in, in each unit, but don't forget they still roll 12 dice while they're four, five or six figures in the unit. Once they get down to three, once they get down to half strength, they reduce to six dice. You can see they move on five plus, so they're quite happy to move around the battlefield, but they attack and they shoot at seven plus, so they're a little bit more reluctant to actually get involved. In fact, you don't want to ever go into attack with them because they're gonna get badly mauled. You can see they've only got an armor of one, so um, in, in a melee, they are going to lose, unless they're against other skirmishers, of course, they're not on equal terms. And their attack value and their defense value for fighting, you only hit on sixes. So they're not really to be used at all in close combat. It's a cheap unit, it's only two points, which is handy. And as you see there, they if they stand still and shoot at 12 inches, they hit on fives, plus five plus. So that's fives and sixes. Their movement is eight inches, of course. But they are hard to target, which means that uh, skirmishes count as armor two versus shooting and may only be targeted within 12 inches. So a unit of bowmen firing at them, if they're more than 12 inches away, can't even target them. And if they do target them, they, they suddenly get an armor of two. And of course, in terrain, like I've got them there, they're going to be armour of three, aren't they? Because they get a bonus for being in that terrain. So they are useful in terrain where they're, they're going to be hard to kill. Now, the other thing they do get is um, they get skirmish 
uh, and they get evade as well. Now a skirmish is an ordered activation that's successful on a 7 plus. So again, it's like shooting or attacking. It's 7 plus to activate that. But it may then do half a move and shoot. Or it can shoot and do half a move. But all the models in the unit shoot with a minus one to their scores. So you only hit on sixes. So that's the downside of, of doing a skirmish move. But of course it's handy if they want to get into terrain to make sure they're safe then it's worth doing. The other uh, bonus they get is, is evade. So when an enemy successfully um, rolled to attack this unit but before it moves the unit may test to evade at 7 plus. Again that 7 plus is what it, what it needs to be able to do that. If it succeeds it immediately carries out a skirmish action targeting the attacking unit. It may not move closer to the attacking unit and must avoid other units by the three inches as usual. But casualties inflicted by the skirmish action cause a courage test or a lucky blow uh, at the end of the attack. So the charging unit then moves its full charge distance following the evading unit. Of course, if it if it uh, it may well be stopped when it does a courage test. So it you know hopefully they will survive. But the charging unit then moves its full charge following the evading unit. If it makes contact, it attacks with the evading unit, reducing its armour to one. Well, it's one anyway, so it's, it's not going to get any worse than that. It will always be one. And if it uh, cannot contact it, it must move as close as possible, moving no closer than three inches to the evading unit. If the evade test fails... The unit stands in place and awaits attack without shooting or moving and its armour becomes one during attack. Well again it's, it's got an armour of one anyway. An evading unit will always fight uh, when contacted and a unit may evade as many times it wishes in a turn. Evade cannot be used if a unit is battered but if it gets caught by anything really in the open um, it's going to die horribly. Incidentally it's worth mentioning that if a unit Let's just say, for example, a unit of knights was nearby and they had to do a wild charge and were forced to attack those skirmishers in that wood. Well, it says in the rules that units in rough terrain attack and defence of 5 plus and the armour of 2 are less ferocious, which means that the knights will be fighting the skirmishers on, on equal terms. So skirmishers, although they shouldn't try and activate uh, and attack themselves if they're attacked whilst in um, poor terrain they may well survive because they are going to their armor is going to be two anyway which is better than one in the open but but so will the knights so they'll be fighting on equal terms but they do not want to get caught anywhere in the open so you can see that uh, they can be really really useful they can shoot at a distance or like they're only shooting on seven plus but it can be very useful to cause a serious damage to an uh, enemy while they're safe in, in terrain that's to their advantage. There is in the book on, on page 120, um, where we are, the flighty light troops, which I'll read out now because it's, it's worth thinking about doing that. We, I've used it in one game only so far and I actually quite liked it. But let me rule out what it says. The optional rule um, changes the tactic of skirmishing light troops on the tabletop. Instead of standing their ground and using the shoot action, troops that historically skirmished rather than delivered a, delivered a heavy rate of fire lose their ability to use the shoot action and must instead skirmish. They must skirmish all the time. If you wish to try this out, apply the following changes. Because you'll realise that if you're skirmishing all the time, you're never going to be hitting on fives and sixes. It's only going to be sixes. However, look at the, the bullet points here. Remove the shoot action. Change the skirmish ability to six plus. So instead of skirmishing at seven plus, they're now skirmishing at six plus. So they've got more chance of actually doing it. The unit must make the full half move noted in the skirmish rule. I don't really understand that part of it, I must admit. And we had we didn't do that in our game because if it if it's in, for example, solid cover, it would try and stay in solid cover. Or you can move them a little bit, but they're not going to want to leave that solid cover up cover, are they? I'm not sure why that why that was added, but anyway. And there's no change to the point system. 
it just means that this unit in the flighty light troops rule will only hit on sixes rather than fives and sixes but they're going to be able to make that an easier thing to do on a six plus rather than a seven plus it doesn't mention anything about evading there so i'd imagine that the evade still has to be seven plus but for all other shooting it's six plus it's worth considering doing that because um i say the one time we used it it worked quite well but that's up to you right now let's move on to the light cavalry again it's very similar to skirmishers they are there to harass the enemy but the main difference here is that they, they don't want to be going into a poor terrain or, or uneven ground or any, any, any cover. They, uh, they will be at a disadvantage if they, do, if they did, did so. But they are, first of all, they're, they're four points. They're, they're twice the, the cost of um, normal skirmishers, foot skirmishers. Um, and they are much the same. They, they move on five plus, happy to move around the battlefield. Now the difference, there's a slight difference here in that um, it attacks on 7 plus. So again, it doesn't like going into close combat. Although it would be okay against skirmishers because you can see further down it's got armour of 3 anyway. And in the open, if they saw skirmishers in the open that is, then it would be worth targeting them because they've got a, a much better chance of causing damage. They hit on 5 plus if, they, if they're attacking and they've got an armour of 3. They also shoot at 6 plus, so they've got a, a better chance of shooting anyway. The courage, incidentally, I forgot to mention that on the skirmishes, the courage is 5 plus, so they're, they're not exactly enthusiastic. Once they start taking casualties, they can soon they can soon be in trouble. They've got a range of 12 inches. They're armed with bows here, but they can be armed with javelins. But if you do arm them with javelins, it's minus one point for the cost of the unit, so it only costs three points but their range is reduced to just six inches. So unlike foot skirmishes, if you've got javelin armed light horse, then their range is only six inches. They've got a 12 inch movement so they can move around the battlefield quite quickly. They have the same rule as foot skirmishes in so much they can skirmish and they can evade. The only other option you've got uh, with light cavalry is you can make them veteran which costs two points, so they're becoming a six-point unit, which is quite expensive. But think of the Mongols or Huns, where they probably would be veteran, but because they do not suffer then the minus one penalty to shoot um, when they're skirmishing. So they can do a skirmish move, and they're still hitting on fives and sixes, so they can do serious damage. I've seen um, light cavalry used very effectively when they've been veterans, a mate of mine, Graham, used them against uh, a Norman army and they devastated this Norman um, force with having two units of veteran. But when I used them, <laughs> I still failed to activate them, so I didn't use them quite as well. But they can be um, very, very effective indeed. But they are, as I said, they're a six-point unit, so they're not cheap to have. So there we are, they're the first two units I'm, I've uh, wanted to have a look at to, to see what you thought about them. And I shall be doing other units uh, in other videos later on. But hope you enjoyed that and it gives you a bit better of an insight of what um, those troop types can do in these uh, excellent set of Lion Rampant rules. Right, that's it from me. I'll see you again soon.